Should you only hunt with a crossbow? Or should you use a rifle during the rifle seasons and maybe a muzzleloader during the muzzleloader seasons? That's this episode of Death by Bungie. You probably already noticed that this scene here is not set up the way most of my videos are for Death by Bungie. Usually I'm sitting behind Bungie right here on this side porch with the Buckfield Clover food plot behind me. This one's a little bit different because we are just about ready to start the rifle season here in Pennsylvania, or as I like to call it, the second crossbow season. Those of you watching this channel know that from time to time, I do hunt with a rifle. I hunt woodchucks with a rifle and predators, stuff like that. If I was gonna go out and do some squirrel hunting, I probably would use either a 20 gauge shotgun or maybe a 22 or something like that. But for the purposes of deer and turkey here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, and when I travel to Maryland, my only interest is crossbow hunting. That is my love. That is my primary interest since 2010 when I first hunted with Bungie, crossbows, that does it for me. It completely changed the way that I look at hunting. But a number of people have asked me, hey, you know, do you hunt, why do you hunt with just with a crossbow? They've asked me why that is. I want to explain that in this video. And they've also asked me, uh, you know, how, shouldn't you hunt with a rifle and all that sort of thing if you're in an area where you can legally hunt with a rifle and if you are a person who can legally hunt with a rifle. My answer to that, I'm going to tell you right up front, is it's entirely up to you. That's all I got for you on the subject, really. The rest of this is gonna be talking about it. But essentially, if you like to hunt with a rifle during a rifle season, if you like to hunt with a crossbow during the archery seasons, go for it. If you want to, if you have a muzzle loader or if you want to go out there and experience flintlock style hunting, the old 1700s model of hunting uh, in the late season, for example, here in Pennsylvania, go for it. That's what this stuff is there for. Go out there and experience nature, experience hunting, experience the outdoors with the weapon of your choice. A few people were wondering why I don't hunt with a gun and they were actually asking me questions. I had one guy who posted on two different videos asking me if I was a felon and that for that reason I couldn't hunt with a rifle. Absolutely not the case. I am not a felon. Um, I'm sympathetic to anybody out there who does have a conviction on his or her record that prevents him from or her from uh, hunting with rifles or the, with the weapon of their choice. I, that makes me feel bad. I am a lawyer. In fact, I do an awful lot of criminal defense. That's my job and I'm very sympathetic to that. I understand how convictions, felonies, and some misdemeanors can exclude you from being able to carry a firearm. That makes me feel bad. And I, you know, and it, but it's also legally, I understand why the law is that way. It makes a lot of sense also. So, I'm, you know, but I do, I do, I am aware of that as an issue. However, I don't have that problem. I'm not only a guy who loves guns and has tons of guns and lots of pistols and down the road, I can promise you I'm going to be doing videos about the pistols. So make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in that sort of thing that will be coming up. In addition to that, not only do I have a lot of guns, have a lot of appreciation for firearms, but I also, uh, I'm a lifetime member of the NRA. I'm a huge supporter of the NRA and I love the Second Amendment and it's my, it's of all the amendments, it is my favorite amendment. In fact, if we didn't have a Second Amendment, I'm not sure we'd have any other freedoms. So why do I almost only hunt with a crossbow? And the reason for that, like I said, is that I just really, really enjoy it. It opened up my eyes to a whole new world of hunting, extended my seasons significantly, and gave me a different view on this place, the place where I grew up. We have about 40 acres here that I have access to for hunting and for wildlife habitat management. I do food plots, as you know, and a lot of other things that go hand in hand with crossbow hunting. Back in 2011, 
in 2012. I had already shot deer with bungee, I had already harvested some deer, and had a great success going with, with the crossbow. I went out west for the first time. I was hunting away from my home county. It was the first time I hunted anywhere other than here on this place, for the most part. Went out west to visit a friend of mine who grew up here in Pennsylvania. He asked me to come out there out west, and we went on a hunt for javelina. Did not get a javelina. With my rifle, I took, uh, had a 30-30 I took with me the first year I went out there. We were hoping to get shots on javelina. We could not connect with any. I went out the following year as well. Still didn't have any success, but that second year, we were talking about whether I would get a compound bow so that I could hunt in the archery seasons. Uh, in the archery season out there, crossbows are not legal during that archery season, at least not yet. I was able to go out there with my crossbow, however, for the handgun archery and muzzleloader season, which is uh, where you can use muzzleloaders and all that. It's not their rifle season, not a full-fledged rifle season, but it does allow those other weapons. So I was out there for that season, sort of uh, looking over the place, and I, I really, really loved hunting in the West. It was just a blast. Someday I would like to go back there, and primarily my, the driving factor for me to go back there is to take this camera. I did not have the same uh, DSLR style video camera back then, and I think if I did, I would have captured a lot better images. I would have done some great photography, and I just, you know, a lot better video, that sort of thing. Even without seeing Havelina, it would have been a much better production, a much better um, source of video to bring back with me. But I really, really enjoyed hunting in the West. So that's one of the things that I got out of that trip was video and the, the way to really capture, it really solidified with me that I wanted to improve my video skills because the video that I brought back was not nearly as nice as what I experienced while I was out there. I wasn't able to capture images that really, really captured how beautiful the West is. In addition to that, the second thing that I brought back with me after that first trip and after the second trip was I want to just hunt with a crossbow. And I decided that's what was going to be my focus. From now on, Bungie and I were going to start a YouTube channel. I was going to focus on getting really good with a crossbow, figuring out that weapon so I could be dependable and reliable with it, very confident with it. And out of that grew this YouTube channel. I started putting together videos because I was learning a lot about crossbows and I wanted to sort of put that in video format to share that with other people. So should we only hunt with a crossbow? Well, that's a very good question. There is an old saying when it comes to firearms, an old saying, when it comes to hunting. And that is, beware the man who shoots but one gun. And the reason for that, the thinking behind that saying is, if you're a guy that in the Old West and you used one pistol all the time, you're real good with it. But if you switch between pistols and rifles, or if you switch between different pistols, if you switched between different rifles, you're not going to be as effective because you're using different things. One of the things I've learned about this is ammunition. Rifles, you'll find out, some of them shoot one brand of ammunition a lot better than they shoot other brands of ammunition. You do need to test them a little bit. You need to go out there and fire a whole bunch of shots with one brand and see how those shots group, and then shoot another brand of ammunition through that same rifle and see how that brand of ammunition groups, how that works with your gun. Does that sound familiar? It's exactly what we do with crossbows, but on a smaller scale, a much more intricate scale. With crossbows, we're very concerned about the type of arrow, the length of the arrow, the weight of the broadhead, all of that, because all of that affects arrow flight. I have some arrows that fly better than others, that group better than others, and I use those arrows in a collection of my as my hunting arrows. And that's one of the reasons I decided to hunt almost exclusively with a crossbow was because all of the time, all of the energy that I spent with a crossbow would be diminished. I would be reducing the amount of time that I had available to make that work if I hunted with a rifle also. Case in point, this weekend, if I'm going to hunt with this on Monday, come rifle season, by the time you see this video, the rifle season will already be underway. But if I was going to hunt with this during the rifle season, then I have to go out and sight this in. Sunday, I'd go out there and make a whole bunch of noise, shoot all over the place. And while I'm shooting, while I'm sighting that in, we're going to be in a situation where I'm not making sure the crossbow is sighted in. I am not spending time with the crossbow and familiarizing myself even further with that weapon. Now, this isn't rocket science. It's not like you need to spend your whole life every day uh, working with a crossbow. If you are a compound bow hunter, you do have to spend an awful lot of time 
you know, pulling that back, getting that muscle memory, uh, learning how to bend at the waist of, from a tree stand, all the stuff that goes along with compound bow hunting. I am not, never tried it, not interested in it, not, and I'm not knocking at all anyone who does that. In fact, I'm very impressed with anybody who can kill deer consistently with a compound bow. I think that's fantastic. I am certainly not there. That is not a skill that I possess. And frankly, I don't really possess rifle hunting skills. Uh, and what I mean by that is, um, I do not have the ability to shoot this rifle without flinching. I just don't. I, I you know, I could probably develop that over time, but I certainly, uh, you know, I'm 47 years old and I haven't gotten any better at it since I was 12. So. I just don't see, you know, that's not what I'm cut out for. Other people can keep their eyes open the entire time they're shooting. Some people claim that they can watch the bullet or at least the vapor trail go through the air and hit the target. Uh, I am nowhere near that. I can watch the arrow, on the other hand, go through the scope of my crossbow and hit the target. I can do that every time. I don't flinch when firing the crossbow. It's a whole different animal. So some people are cut out for different things, and that goes back to what I'm saying here. Some people are cut out for rifle hunting. Some people are cut out for uh, crossbow hunting. Some people are cut out for both. Some people can use multiple weapons and do a very consistent, effective job with just about any type of hunting implement, and that's awesome. So should you only hunt with a crossbow, or should you choose a rifle during a rifle season? Now, one of the things I had mentioned, if you're on our Facebook page, uh, I showed a present that I had received for Christmas last year. It's a book, Whitetail Deer Management and Habitat Improvement by Steve Bartella. It's the first of Steve Bartella's books that I've read. He's got several books. And if you're not familiar with uh, Steve Bartella, he is from deer and deer hunting, that television show from that magazine. I subscribe to the magazine, there's a lot of great information in that. Very relevant to what I do here. If you are in a place that has a lot of white-tailed deer and you have property that you want to manage, deer and deer hunting is a great source of it. They have a channel here on YouTube you can subscribe to. They have books, they have magazines, all that good stuff. One of the points that he makes in this book, however, is that over the years, and I'll read that passage right out of here, but he, there's a section in here where he talks about firearms, and he's talking about that, and he says, a high number of firearm hunters can also be a sin. In other words, that it does create a lot of pressure for deer, and that's an unfortunate thing here in Pennsylvania, the rifle season. We have more hunters hitting the woods in the rifle seasons than any other state, if you can believe that. Pennsylvania, we pull people from New Jersey, we pull people from New York, we pull people from Maryland, we pull people from all over the place into Pennsylvania, and we clog up the woods with tons and tons of people, okay? At one point, nearly a million people were hitting the woods on the opening day of buck season here in Pennsylvania. It certainly has died down in the last decade or so. It's nowhere near as much pressure as when I was a kid, but it's still tremendously high, and it seems to go in waves year to year. But one of the quotes from Steve Bartella in that book, take it from someone that was an absolute bow hunting only snob for way too many wasted years. You're only hurting yourself by not enjoying every season you legally can. Now, let's be clear though, you can still enjoy the rifle seasons with a crossbow. And I have done that year after year after year. I just have to comply with the fluorescent orange requirements, but I go out and hunt deer with a crossbow. This property, like I said, is set up so much so, I, I work so much in the direction of a crossbow that with those shorter shots, those close-in shots, that a rifle really isn't too much of an advantage other than you can take shots at running deer, which is not, advisable, but it certainly happens during the rifle season. And you have the option of shooting longer distances. So if you set up your property for rifle hunting, by all means hunt with a rifle. If your property is suitable for rifle hunting, or if you just want to enjoy rifle hunting, go out there and hunt with a rifle. In addition to the fact that hunting with two different hunting implements sort of takes your training, your experience away from one and spreads it thin between the two, which may or may not affect your ability to hunt if you've got a skill set that is suitable for both of the hunting implements. But in addition to sort of taking time away from your training and experience with the crossbow by hunting with a rifle, the other thing is that you're also spreading the cost. Crossbows are not cheap. Okay, crossbow hunting is not cheap. Broadheads are not cheap. The arrows are not cheap. Crossbow hunting can be very expensive. It's an expensive hobby. And if you have a limited income, and I have a pretty good income, but it's still limited. Uh, we all have some sort of limited income, I think, especially when it comes to what we can spend on, justify spending on hunting gear. But if you're hunting with a rifle, this gets pretty expensive too. Now I've got a low budget Savage Arms 
uh, 270 here. I bought this a few years ago because a 270, I wanted a 270 that would shoot nice and flat. 270s are known for shooting nice and flat. They're very good uh, rifles for that reason. In addition to that, I, the ammo is not inexpensive and it's readily available. I can go to Walmart and stock up on 270 ammo. I have all I need, as you can see. And the other thing about a 270, if I do go back out to uh, Arizona to hunt out west, I will probably take this with me to shoot a coyote or two while I'm there. But it gets expensive, so if you're hunting with two different weapons, or if you add a third and all of a sudden now I'm hunting with a flintlock or maybe a muzzle loader, you could have three or four different hobbies that you're spending a whole bunch of money on. One of the reasons you might want to consider hunting primarily with a crossbow or almost only with a crossbow is because you don't have to invest as much money. Now, if you already have rifles, if you already have all of that equipment and you're just buying ammo, by all means, maybe that's not a consideration. One other reason you might want to consider hunting with a crossbow and investing in that instead of the rifle, instead of trying to spread yourself thin across multiple seasons, is kids. My daughter will probably never happily or voluntarily fire this rifle. She's just not interested in firearms. She took her hunter safety course, didn't have to shoot in order to qualify for that, uh, passed it with flying colors, uh, really didn't have much interest in going to see people shoot, and doesn't like to be nearby. She doesn't like the loud noises. She's just not interested in firearms. That may change. I mean, she's 14 years old down the road. That certainly might change. The crossbow, on the other hand, she has shot. She's done a very good job with it. I think if I got a suitable crossbow for her that was a little bit smaller, that fit her body size, I think she'd probably take very well to crossbow hunting. Right now, she's very interested in hunting, very interested in the outdoors. Doesn't particularly want to go out there and hunt herself, but she's very interested in and supportive of the hunting process. So that's all great, and I don't want to discourage that by forcing her to fire one of these. And certainly don't want to discourage her uh, from hunting by forcing her to go out there and walk around and push deer the way I did in inadequate the warm clothing, the whole bit. I mean, I used to freeze to death out there pushing deer for older folks. Was the That's how I grew up hunting, right? Uh, and the rifle that I carried at that time was a Model 94 Winchester, which I still have. I love that old rifle. I killed every deer I've ever killed with a rifle, I killed with that rifle. And it's a it's certainly effective. In fact, every deer I've ever shot at, I killed with that rifle. I mean, it like, never, never failed. It never failed me. Not saying it doesn't happen, but it certainly was much more effective than crossbows in terms of a track record, that's for sure. But that rifle would totally turn her off to firearm hunting across the board. If I were to have her shoot that 30-30, I don't think she'd have any interest in ever hunting with a rifle. So with this, maybe the day will come when that happens. She's not, she has no problem with a pellet gun. I have an air gun, a really nice, uh, you know, 1300 feet per second air gun. Uh, she has no problem with that, you know, things like that. So. Down the road, that may change, but for now, um, I think if you have children, you want to introduce them to hunting, it just might be that crossbow hunting is the way to introduce them to that as opposed to rifle hunting. Rifle hunting, you certainly can reach out and touch deer a lot easier, and their chances of success, if they're okay firing the weapon and they're accurate with it, they can. their chances of success are much greater, I believe, with the rifle. However, uh, the crossbow is going to be a lot more palatable to younger children. So let me know in the comments, are you going to hunt with a rifle during your rifle seasons or do you hunt with the crossbow or some kind of archery equipment all the way through? Let me know how and why you choose to do it the way that you choose to do it. And also, um, if you're interested about whether or not I take the 270 out for the opening day of the rifle season or whether I stick with bungee for what I refer to as the second crossbow season, if you're interested in which one I do, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the Facebook page too because I get a lot of updates on there. That's a lot more real time, the Facebook page is. It's a lot more up to date because it's a lot easier to post pictures to the Facebook page, which I love to do. And I love to co comments and I love to talk to people and read the comments and all that stuff. Very interactive and I love that. So if you're interested in that, look up the Facebook page. On the other hand, subscribe here to find out future what happens here uh, in, on Death by Bungie. And, until next time, all hail Bungie! The second state is number one in my